Luke Walton reporting. Now, I mentioned Claire Andrews from the Green Party is here. Now, traditionally, we've judged our councils uh, very much on you know, how many homes they build, what roads they deliver, uh, jobs they create. Do you think we need a fundamental change on that? And actually, the, the, the main criteria we should judge our councils on is, is what are they doing about climate change? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think you're right. I mean, I'm really pleased to see that some of our councils are at least starting to understand the need to become carbon neutral before 2030, not 2050, like um, the Westminster government. And the reason for this is we're basically on a cliff edge. Um, we're facing uh, pushing our, our climate past tipping points from which we really aren't going to be returned. Positive feedback loops will kick in and we won't be able to bring things back. We'll have climate chaos. So I think we're right to, to judge them on more than just economic growth, growth. We need to be judging um, how our society and our economy is doing based on things like the environment and health and well-being. Um, it's not all just about the bottom line anymore. But there is a trade-off, isn't there, as the council says, that you know, support for tackling climate change might disappear pretty quickly if people can't get the new home they want, uh, if the bypass they, that they'd hoped for it doesn't happen, or if they find it harder to get a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to look at how these things are brought about. And I think there is growing public support to take action on, on, on the climate as well. I mean, I was out this week with the Youth Strike for Climate, and those are young people who are um, striking from school to protest about the lack of action on climate change. Um, and they're but at not... the moment, they're not, I mean, yeah. it's there very much about their future, I understand yeah. that. But at the moment, they're not the people who perhaps, you know, will be denied a home at this moment or find that their job is disappearing or find that, as I say, the road isn't. That, that's the problem, isn't it? You've got to take people with you. And if you, you, you cut back too much, too quickly, you might not. Um, yeah, we do have to take people with us, but I think there are two ways that we should be doing this. And one is for our, our local government and our national government to be telling the truth about the this, this scale and the immediacy of the threat that we face. Um, and not having these kind of inconsistent policies um, like we saw in Durham, where um, on the one hand they're declaring climate emergency, but on the other hand they're carrying on with kind of business as usual with just a few tweaks. That's just not going to solve the problem. We need to, to really show people that what's needed is a, is a huge shift in our economy, a radical change away from all the road building and airport expansion and into kind of clean, uh, clean transport, clean public transport and renewable energy. Uh, Phil Wilson, um, talking about trade-offs in places like Durham, it's just an excuse for not doing enough, isn't it? Well, I don't think I don't think that's true. Actually, I mean, we do need the houses, and we can have the debate about where they are. Twenty-five thousand houses, I think, was going to be built over so many years. There, it's the kind of houses you're going to build, and I think there needs to be some kind of national planning strategy about the kind of houses that are built, that they are environmentally friendly, that they do save uh, the, the climate, for example. Well, should and they think, be built on the green belt? As, wait, as, as I think they need, they, need to be, they need to be built in, a, er, in areas where we, where we can maximise their, their utility, where we can maximise how near they are to, to business. As far as the roads is concerned, uh, you know, we need, if we need to build those roads, you, you, you drive through Durham City, you can see how congested it is. I think we need a re well, relief road. I cannot, just all, uh, all I was going to say... evidence just building new roads just, no, just moves traffic. But it's, again, and, it's, and if it it's the kind of houses help. you're going to build, it's the kind of cars you're going to put on them. And I know that what we want to do is have conventional cars to be ruled out, I think, in 15, 20 years' time. We need to move to electric cars. And it's only right that, that we do that. And it does need to be joined up government, but there also needs to be some kind of politics of solutions here, where the parties themselves, you know, it's, this isn't just a decision for one government, it's for governments into the future. Okay. And I think we need to be getting something which, okay. which is holistic in our approach. Uh, Judith Wallace, um, you, you don't run North Tyneside Council, so Labour does, but the scale of house building in that area uh, doesn't seem to have a huge amount of thought about the environment involved in it, does it? I think the scale of house building is, uh, is excessive, actually. We have been working with, for example, the Mugs Eden Action Group to oppose the current local plan. A lot of residents are very unhappy about the 3,000 houses that are going on. Uh, the aren't you doing that for for kind of not in my backyard reasons rather than to save the planet? Not at all. We've looked at the figures, we've looked at the predictions for population growth and we have argued consistently that the, that the predictions are far too high. We simply do not need so many houses. We need some, but not so many. And I do think that actually with regard to climate change, um, the people who are seeking uh, these targets, whether it's uh, current government, councils, whatever, do need to be really, really clear with people about what the impact will be. You know, there could be huge changes in jobs, losses of jobs, huge changes in tax there could be huge well, restrictions on what... What about the honesty, on what... as Claire Andrews no, said, no. About the, also about 
the impact if you don't do these yes, things. Absolutely. Um, all I'm saying is that it's got to be very clear that people understand the changes, the restrictions in their in their lifestyle. You know, whether it's not driving cars, not flying, not using electronic equipment. It may well be that when people have all all the arguments put in front of them, that they will support that. But I think it needs to be made very clear. And what I would like to see is more investment in innovation. I mean, our scientists, our engineers have been fantastic at coming up with more efficient, cleaner, and greener uh, equipment and. Uh, factories and so forth even over recent years I'd like to see more investment in that okay. and in our fuel industry but a great threat to that is Labour's threat to, to nationalise things no okay, one's well, going to okay. invest if okay. the company's going to be taken off them okay um, Claire Andrews I suppose uh, the, the classic argument here is is that we, we you know we make sacrifices we perhaps damage our economy we'll talk about the things that Judith Wallace did there but all the emissions continue to come from other countries uh, and actually the planet is no safer but we've hurt ourselves what would you say to that I don't actually agree that this is all about making sacrifice. It's about making like big changes, yes, but who wouldn't want warmer homes? Who wouldn't want cheaper homes that are he cheaper to heat? Who wouldn't want to be able to uh, get to work with less congestion and less stress? Who wouldn't want uh, more green space to work and, and play and relax in? I mean, that's all good for our health and good for our well-being and our mental health. Um, and, and saves the NHS a lot of money. So I think this rhetoric about this all just being about sacrifice um, is actually really misleading to the public. Uh, Phil Wilson, uh, Labour's appointed a shadow minister for climate justice this mm. week on this, but if you want genuine change, the young people who are you know, part of these protests, aren't they going to turn to the Green Party, not Labour? Well, you know, I've got children, I've got grandchildren as well, so I'm really concerned about the future that they're... That they're they might face, you know, in a few years' they time. Prioritise it, though, aren't they? You've got the green party. Absolutely, the, can the I just key? say it does need to be prioritised. That's why I'm saying that we need some kinds of kind of politics of solutions here, where the part it's not just going to be one parliament; it's going to be several parliaments. And I think there's got to be some kind of agreement amongst the par uh, the parties going forward about what it is we need to say. And as Judith said, we need clarity, and we also need honesty in all of this about what the what the trade-offs are on any decision that's going to be taken into the future. Judith Wallace, have the Conservatives really got the within them to meet this tough target when it comes to making the difficult decisions you've talked about? Well, I think we do need more clarity and more determination. It's all very well to come up with a target, but you've got to have a practical plan as to how that's going to be realised, which is why I am calling for a lot more investment in innovation. That could be done perhaps by the tax system or with subsidies, etc. Carbon dioxide um, uh, capture, I think, is a huge area where, indeed, we in the North East could probably benefit. Um, you know, that technology is being developed, for example, in Norway and Canada. I think I think it would be a huge opportunity for us to invest in that, both good for our local economy, good for the environment as well. Uh, Claire Andrews, uh, you, you've taken part in, in some of these Extinction Rebellion protests. If you don't see the kind of action that you desperately want to see, how far are you prepared to go? Are you prepared to blockade airports, civil disobedience? What, what are you prepared to do, given you think this is so important? I mean, I think this is, you know, this is really do or die. We haven't got a choice here. And there are people who are prepared to go to huge but peaceful lengths to try and continue to put pressure um, on Even government. Even disrupting some people's flights, holidays, lives? Um, I mean, I think what, what we have to understand is the disruption that's going to be caused by the extreme weather events and the food insecurity that will come as a result of climate change if we fail to take action is going to be so much worse. And that is going to hit the poorest regions in the UK and the poorest people within those and the poorest okay. people in the world the worst of all. Uh, thank you very much for now. Uh, now, it was the big idea to rebalance the economy between the, between the South and the North.